Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's go to the cold country up in the mountains where we have a ski lift. And this particular ski lift brings skiers up a hill. The slope is about 20 degrees. The ski lift chairs are moving at 3 meters per second. And there's a total of 36 chairs on the ski lift, each which can hold two people rated at 80 kilograms each. That's the weight, the mass of the person, plus all the ski equipment. And so what kind of power is required? There's a motor, of course, pulling those, key, those, uh, those skiers up the hill. What is the power required to do so? Well, the way we can do that is use the definition of power. Power is equal to work divided by time. And in this case, the work is the work required to gain the height. And so that would be equal to the change, or the, that would be the change in potential energy divided by the amount of time that it takes. So it's going to be the, the work done to increase the potential energy of the skiers. And potential energy is by definition equal to mgh divided by the amount of time that it takes. And realizing that m and g are constant, so this can be written as mg times the change in the height over time. And so what we need to do now is figure out how that, that relates to the speed at which the skiers will go up the hill using the ski lift. So what we can then do is draw a triangle. In our triangle we have an angle, theta, being equal to 20 degrees. And here this would be the height gained. And here along the hypotenuse would be the velocity of the skiers going up the hill. And then there's a relationship between that. We can say that the sine of theta by definition is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse and so in this case that is equal to the height divided by the velocity but actually not the velocity um, how about the distance instead of writing velocity there I'm going to write the distance traveled up the hill because if this is in terms of distance, then this must be in terms of distance as well. So that's the height gained over the distance traveled along the hypotenuse. If we now divide both the numerator and denominator by delta t, so what we're going to do first is we're going to... I'm going to move this over here. Distance times the sine of theta is equal to the height. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the change of distance and the change of height. So that means the delta D times the sine of theta is equal to the delta H. And now we're going to divide both sides by delta T. That's where I ultimately want to get to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take delta D divided by delta T times the sine of theta is equal to delta H divided by delta T delta H divided by delta T. So now coming back over here, delta H divided by delta T can be written as the sine of theta times delta D divided by delta T. So let's make that change. So the power needed is going to be equal to mg. And instead of delta H over delta T, we write delta D over delta T times the sine of theta. Now, the change in the distance going up the slope divided by the time, by definition, that's the velocity of the skiers going up the hill. So that means that the power is equal to mgv times the sine of theta. And that's, of course, ignoring friction and efficiency losses and all that. But for electric motors, that's probably fairly close. So the power is equal to the mass. That would be 36 times 80 kilograms for the total mass of all the skiers. Now we don't need to take into account the weight of the ski lift themselves, I mean the, the, the chairs themselves, because as chairs are going up, we have chairs coming down on the other side so that the, the masses of the chairs kind of equal one another and therefore cancel each other out. G is 9.8 meters per second square. And V is 3 meters per second. And then we multiply that times the sine of 20 degrees, and that means we get power in terms of watts. So let's calculate what that is equal to. So we have 36 times 80 times 9.8 times 3 times 20, take the sine of that, equals, and that gives us 
about 28, about 29,000 watts, 29,000 watts. And if we convert that to horsepower, we have one horsepower divided by 746 watts. So divide by 746, and that gives us about 38.8 horsepower. So you need a pretty good size motor, electric motor, to pull those skiers up the hill, but about 40 horsepower can do it. If we ignore all the lack of efficiencies and friction, all that, that's what it's going to take, and that's how it's done.